Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a closer look at the time constant of an RC circuit. Remember, an RC circuit is a circuit that contains a capacitor and a resistor, and we know that the current through the capacitor is defined by this equation, the capacitance times the change in the voltage over time. If we solve for this equation, if we solve for the current through the whole circuit, we end up with an equation that looks like this that the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the initial voltage across the capacitor times E to the minus T over RC. Now that product, RC, the resistance times the capacitor, is known as the time constant. So we call the tau, the Greek letter tau, which represents the time constant, is the product of R times C in an RC circuit. What that means is that if the resistance increases in the circuit, the time constant increases, or if the capacitance increases, the time constant increases. But what is it really that we're looking at here? What does it really mean when we talk about the time constant? Well, it tells us about how fast the capacitor will discharge, or in some cases, depending upon the circuit, how fast the capacitor will charge. In this case, we assume that the capacitor had an initial charge on it, called Q sub naught, and over time the charge will simply leak off from one side, go to the resistor, go to the other side until the capacitor is no longer charged. With other words, until the charge on both sides of the capacitor is equal. How long will that take? Well, that depends on the time constant. Now imagine if you had a much bigger capacitor, a capacitor that could hold a lot more charge. So for the same initial voltage, the capacitor would there contain a lot more charge and therefore it would take a lot longer for the capacitor to discharge which means therefore that if the capacitance is larger the time constant would be larger. What about the resistor? Well if we had a larger resistor it would not allow as much current to flow through the circuit which means it would take longer for the charge from one side to run through the resistor or to flow through the resistor charge doesn't really run, it flows through the resistor to the other side. Again, a larger resistor means smaller current, which means it would take longer for the capacitor to discharge. As an example, let's say that we had a capacitance of 5 microfarads and we had a resistance of 100,000 ohms. If we multiply those together, R times C, 100,000 times 5 times 10 to the minus 6, gives us a half a second. In the next video, I'll show you where the units of second comes from multiplying ohms times farads. Now here we have a graphical representation of the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. Notice as charge leaks off one side and goes to the other side of the capacitor until the capacitor is discharged, the voltage across the capacitor will decrease like this exponential decay curve. Notice that if the time constant is equal to a half second, after a half second, the voltage will have dropped to this amount. After one second, it'll continue to drop and so forth. And eventually, as time reaches infinity, then of course, the voltage will go to zero. Now, that's not really a practical concept in electronics because if we have to wait until time is infinity before there's no more voltage across capacitor, that doesn't make a lot of sense. After a while, the voltage will be so small across the capacitor that we can consider it zero in all practical purposes. To give you an example here numerically, let's say that here we have a column that represents the time elapsed and the voltage remaining on the capacitor. When time is equal to zero, it has the full voltage across the capacitor V sub naught. But after one time constant, the voltage has decreased to 0.368 times the initial voltage or 36.8% of the initial voltage. How do we figure that out? All we have to do is plug in one tau or one RC in for time, we get e to the minus 1, e to the minus 1 is 0.368 and that's how we get the voltage across the capacitor after one time constant. After two time constant, it's dropped to 13.5%, after three time constant, it's dropped to 5%, after four, it has dropped to 1.8% of the initial value. And finally, after five time constant, the voltage across the capacitor has dropped to less than 1% of its initial value, the initial value of V sub naught. And so therefore we typically say in electronics that after five time constants, the voltage across the capacitor is essentially gone to zero because we know at that point it's less than 1% of its initial value. And in all practical purposes, that would be considered 
close to zero, close enough to be considered zero, or the capacitor is fully discharged. So that's why the concept of five time constants is important. So in this case, in this particular circuit, if the capacitor was five microfarads and the resistance was 100,000 ohms, it would take five time constants or five times a half second, which is two and a half seconds, for the capacitor to fully discharge. And so that's what we mean with the time constant. It tells us a lot about what happens in the circuit or more precisely what happens in an RC circuit. And that's how it's done.